My name is Bob Haverlock, and uh, I was, uh, the, the, the Magetchi was dispatched my way in 2013, very kindly by the committee. And, uh, and it was under the umbrella when God was flesh and wild. And, and it, it's, it's, the objective is to retrieve the, 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 the biblical narratives and teachings that, that address God's troubled love affair with the earth and all the creatures, and incidentally humans as well. Scripture, as I think uh, culturally, in the cultural religion that, that we've inherited, is often understood to be about the human drama, human history. Uh, human uh, history is against nature or with nature as background, uh, wallpaper. But in fact, uh, I, I would argue th that um, with scripture has, has a, a kind of a minority report, a kind of subtext, a kind of uh, silver thread that comes out and disappears and goes under. And that is a peculiar relationship that God has with the earth apart from humans. The essential biblical narrative from beginning to end is that of a tragic comedy and, and it ends in a comedy with, with the restoration of, of broken friendships, of, of, of uh, uh, villains, uh, and uh, of uh, all the ordinary creatures thereabout, and it's, it's a comic ending. And if one doesn't have a sense of comedy, then I don't know how you understand scripture. The story, The King of Bigger and More, which takes the, the Nebuchadnezzar story, uh, which is a little three or four line, three or four sentences in, in, in the book of Daniel, a long sentences, um, where God uh, and, and takes the arrogant king and, and we have this kind of, to me, a comic purgatory. Uh, which invites farce and, and other things, where he's tossed bare ass into the bush and, and, and lives with the animals and, and, and uh, becomes animal-like, and out of that regains humility. Uh, in the book of Daniel, he, he does achieve a degree of, of, of humbleness and becomes a good king uh, and recognizes his creaturehood among the creatures and, and more, more generally. The book of Isaiah, Isaiah 14, uh, it presents another picture of the tyrant king. It's like an operetta where this king supposedly has died and has lost none of his arrogance. And supposedly that's King Nebuchadnezzar. So that's how it ends with a kind of vagueness. Did he become a good king or was this temporary or is he still in his offices, in his tower, and hasn't been tossed into the bush yet? And that will come. Uh, so that's a story that's more mythic, more fable-like, and it uh, tries to address the contemporary uh, by uh, doing a kind of uh, porcupine theology of going forwards by going backwards. The world of those with lots and getting more and those with less and less, it's, it's, it's fed by that reasonableness. It's, there's reasons why that's the case and why it should be the case. And uh, the kind of gospel imperative stories uh, are wild and crazy. And, and so I don't pretend that they're other than that. And they're, and they're also earthy and fleshy against the elevated speech of, of, of reason. These are not stories that are going to uh, convert anybody. They're not intended to. Th these are stories written for friends and lovers. Okay? These are stories for those who love the earth and seek its well-being. That's the, the meeting place. And so what they have to put up with is a tradition that they think they know, that has a kind of ugly familiarity, and has been so misshapen that, that you know, we got a detox. Uh, but hopefully they find also in it the beauty and the wisdom that is, is, is there. I'm singing to the choir, and the choir needs to be sung to. It gets tired, uh, it gets confused, it gets inarticulate. So it seeks to offer, you know, 
an articulating of important story teachings. For those of us who are working away, who are weary, it's for them that these stories are, are written rather than those who don't even uh, want to enter the game. And that's okay. There's other work, there's other voices, and my offering is a limited one. Uh, we need the science, we need the political organizing, we need the community activism, we need all those different approaches and languages, and together uh, something might, you know, uh, very good might happen. Thank you.